All right, Dave Burkett from the Detroit Free Press here with former Lions receiver, multi-talented TV host, and all-around good guy, Nate Burleson, for a few minutes during Super Bowl week. And Nate, I think normally we'd be doing this on Radio Road right now, but uh, you're making the rounds. You'd be making the rounds for Crown Royal, uh, a little bit different times we're living in. So I guess look, before we get into you know what you're doing with Crown Royal and everything, let me let me start with this. How's the family? Everyone healthy? How is everyone doing? We're good, man. The family's good out here in New Jersey, living this East Coast lifestyle. Um, we got some heavy snow right outside, but that's as expected out here. Um, life is good, man. Um, how are you doing? How's the family? Everybody good? Everybody's good. You know, Detroit just misses you, Nate. I mean, we see you on TV all the time, but uh, I, I know, I, I'm not like back. having you in the locker room. I was actually supposed to uh, be back with Crown Royal during the season, but um, I couldn't get out there because of COVID restrictions, of course. But Dave, while I have you, you know, I, I like to tell you this when I do see you, but since we have the world watching, or as I'd like to think, um, I want to say I appreciate you. You know, I love you. At this point, we like brothers. We've known each other so long. And um, even dating back to my days in the locker room, even if I was hitting you with cliches <laughs> and didn't know my potential, you, you would tell me, hey man, when you're done, you got a career in this and you would joke about it. And I know that a lot of truth is said in jest. So I always appreciate your encouragement over the years. Yeah, no, no. It's, uh, I think a lot of people here are proud to, you know, see how, uh, how high the star has risen. So um, I want uh, a Detroit song. Yeah, right. Um, all right let, let's start with the big news in Detroit. Obviously, you know, the, the Matthew Stafford trade from the weekend. And we were talking about it a little bit before we started filming just I mean, it, it's wild right now, but the Lions get Jared Goff, they get three picks, you know, the Rams get Stafford, Stafford and Goff both get fresh starts, I guess. Who who won the trade? Ooh, um, seems like every time around this year, we should just have the Nate V and DV what's <laughs> going on in Detroit segment. Uh, let's just let's just do it. Um, but who won the trade? I don't know. I think because I know Matt Stafford, I would say Matt, um, just because this might sound a little crazy, but you know, we talk transparently, me and you. And I know Detroit people might feel a certain type of way if I say this, but it's almost like if I saw Calvin Johnson get traded to the Patriots at the end of his career. Um, you see a guy put in every ounce of himself to the, the craft, um, you know, even though people love to point to Matt Stafford's pockets, his money, I've done it on the air before. He's never once around, he never once walked around the locker room talking about it. Him and Calvin were very similar in that way. Not saying they didn't make it, not saying they didn't let their agents handle that, but it wasn't for the money. It wasn't for the praise. I would push this dude to go talk to the media. He hated that. He only felt comfortable in his helmet, which to me is a, it's the mark of a, a football player, somebody that only cares about football. We all know the toughness, right? Matt, every injury that you knew about times it by two. He's probably the toughest quarterback that I've played with and then I, that I've watched over the last decade or so. With all that said, he has an opportunity to almost control the narrative of the rest of his career. And I'm pretty sure Matt at this point, dealing with injuries almost every season, he can't be playing too much longer. So what, you give him a couple of years, maybe three, where he has a window of time to do something. Um, now he has that opportunity. So I would say, just speaking from the heart that Matt Stafford won this deal and he gets to go to LA and I'm not comparing LA to Detroit, but weather is pretty damn good and compared to those uh, Detroit winners. <laughs> now, when it comes to Detroit, they, uh, they got the picks, you know, and, and golf. And, I, and I, I say picks first and then golf because golf is a good quarterback. When you go to a Super Bowl, you have to respect somebody as such. Has he proved to be a great quarterback? Not yet in his career. So um, could this be the most expensive bridge ever made? The bridge quarterback to the next thing? Possibly. Um, but he also is going to do whatever it takes to prove that um, he shouldn't have shipped me out. Because regardless of how you look at it, him having a $100 million contract, being traded is like being disregarded. It's like somebody picking you up, putting you in a Gladlock bag, and, and taking you to the sidewalk and saying, pick this up, we don't need it no more. So hopefully uh, golf uses this as motivation. But the picks are like gold, though. Um, so for, for me, any team that gets a bounty of picks, whether they're mid to late, late first rounds, um, and then you have your own picks, what do you do with those? Now, in the, in the words of a football player, if you fumble away those picks or you pick guys in their bus or you trade, a, trade away a pick for a free agent that doesn't work out, that's on the front office. So, all right, you got some picks. Now, this is where the genius of the front office execs really has to take shape. No, I, I think you, you hit on a lot of the key points there. We're spending a couple minutes with Nate Burleson here during Super Bowl week on behalf of Crown Royal. One other, you know, Stafford golf question, I think. Do you... 
you've probably watched golf a lot closer than a lot of Lions fans have. So do you think he can be the long-term solution in Detroit or, or do you still see them needing to draft the quarterback this year, next year, whenever that may be? I don't think they need to draft a quarterback this year. I think this is the ultimate year of figuring out what golf is made of. Um, you know, I, I believe he does have an opportunity to be the long-term quarterback. Listen, you don't get paid $100 million and take your team to the Super Bowl if you're not a legitimate starting quarterback in this league. That stuff doesn't happen by dumb luck. Now, you got to give credit to the playmakers. Todd Gurley was a big part of their success offensively. They had some wide receivers and, of course, the, the genius of Sean McVay. So uh, we had Dan Campbell on the show, and he talked about putting together his staff. You know, so you're going to have to put together an offensive staff that can create an offensive game plan week in and week out that is based on the skill set of Jared Goff. There's a, a, a few games that I watched where Matt Stafford was just being Matt. It wasn't necessarily the game plan. It was more his skill set. You know, he, he threw a no-look passage here that I don't think people even looked at. And that wasn't game plan. That wasn't strategy. That was Matt Stafford just saying, all right, Patrick Mahomes and whoever else, hold my beer. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if you'll have that same thing from golf. I'm not sure golf is going to sit back in that pocket and grip it and rip it the same way Matt does. I'm not sure that Jared Goff is going to have the same type of control when we were playing against Dallas and, and it's, 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 it's fourth and our, our third and one on the goal line. And Matt Stafford says, instead of calling a timeout or looking at the coach for, I'm going to just go ahead and dive. Like, I don't know if Jared Goff has that. Now, here's the thing. Because Sean McVay has been such a great play caller, Jared Goff hasn't had the luxury of needing to do that. I think that's the biggest difference between two quarterbacks. There were games where Matt Stafford can take control, like literally just say, I'm calling the plays, I'm making the throws I want, and I'm going to take control. I'm not sure Jared Goff has shown that yet. Does he have it in him? I guess time will tell. 26 years old, played in the Super Bowl, certainly too too early to give up on playing in the Super Bowl two years ago, too, too early sure. to give up on. But I think you're right. The, the offense will look a little different, obviously. Uh, you know, Anthony Lynn calling plays. When you played, there was a guy named Kelvin Johnson that you played with. Um, we'll talk about the Super Bowl here in a sec. That's Sunday. Saturday, we have the Hall of Fame announcement. And uh, I know I talked to you about that a little bit this summer, but Kelvin could be the first wide receiver since Randy Moss to go in on the, the first ballot. You played with both those guys as different maybe as they are from a, a personality standpoint, I guess. How, how similar did you find them on the field? You know, what's wild is that um, I believe they're both um, introverted to a certain extent, even though you see Randy Moss on TV now, and um, he's a big personality. When I played with him, it wasn't so much the same thing. So, you know, he was, he was reserved and he loved the game. And he was, you know, he was as dominant at practice as he was on game day. And, and those are the biggest similarities that, you know, there were moments in practice where, you know, you could really feel yourself as a professional athlete. There's times where I show up and I'm feeling spry. I'm like, ooh, I'm jumping a 40 inch vertical today. My that, was every day, that was every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know those days, Dave and me out there talking crazy, scoring touchdowns. I'm dancing in the end zone. I'm pushing, uh, uh, you know, Stephen Tullock. I'm, I'm starting to fight with Lewis Delmas. I've had those days. But then there's that humbling moment where Calvin is like, let me just flip the switch. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, Oh, that's what greatness looks like. Oh, no, no, I, I get it. I get it. I'm good, but that's greatness. So um, that, that, that's, that's the biggest thing that um, I remember about those two guys is that as, as good as I was when I felt like I'm part of the 1% of the world, one of the best athletes to ever play this game, I'm on the team right now and I'm the best. Those two guys would just, they dunk on us. It'd be like a, a grown man playing with kids. But, you know, as far as this Hall of Fame not. You know, I love the fact that Calvin has come out recently and he started talking. He's like, yeah, I deserve to be in. It's like, <laughs> I'm like where, where did this come from, bro? Like, hold on, where, where's Puff Daddy from the commercials? I, I didn't know that you, first of all, I haven't heard your voice in like two years. Who, who are you talking about deserve to be in? So I, I like it. And, and yeah. it, you know what? If he gets in, it's well-deserved, man, because there was a moment in time where Calvin was, he's undoubtedly the best. You can't argue that. You know, and that's what they say. Were, were they the best? in their era for an extended amount of time. I think the biggest question is, is it an extended amount of time? And is it long enough for him to get the nod over some guys that are still waiting or over a TO who didn't go in first ballot? Well, I'll tell you from the uh, 
being in the room, I, I, I sort of have a good vibe about it. Don't have any idea what's happening yet. We'll find out Saturday, but I do have a good vibe. A couple minutes left here. Uh, and I do want to ask you about the Super Bowl, but before I do that, Nate, tell us, tell us what you're doing with, with Crown Royal. Yeah, so I partnered with Crown Royal and, um, you know, just like when I played, you know, they have embodied some of the things that I live by and play by. One of those things is the, the water break campaign, you know, as a player, your whole, your, your whole purpose is to, to give the best brand out there on the field. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to cook, I'm going to do my thing, um, but I need those water breaks in between to, to finish the job. And it's the same thing when you're enjoying Crown Royal. Um, so they have this great water break campaign and they have a couple of guys um, that are involved. Obviously, I'm sitting here with this shirt on, but uh, Kevin Garnett, he's in the ad that you guys are going to see. And it's dope because he's going to bring the water break campaign to life. Listen, I, I played for the Minnesota Vikings when he was with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Always been a fan of the big ticket. So for me to finally be on his team, it, it's quite amazing. Um, but, but when you partner with the brand that prides itself at being the best, um, and then you look at all the things they're doing behind the scenes, that's what makes it cool, you know, and, and they do a lot of great things in local communities. So um, it's, it's, I don't know, it, it kind of, it's full circle for me. You know, you, you, you want to, you know, partner and establish relationships with not only brands you enjoy, but brands that are doing great things um, outside of just making money and having, uh, helping people celebrate good times. So uh, the big game is coming up and just look for the big campaign, the water break campaign from Crown Royal. You and I will have a maybe a crown royal and a water break when we uh, next time we see each other. Whenever this, uh, no doubt about it. We'll, whenever we'll, this COVID, we'll short on the water break and big <laughs> on the crown. <laughs> um, all right, let's end it with this. Uh, well, I'm gonna squeeze two in. We got two minutes left, so maybe you could hit on both of these. Uh, just I wanted to uh, give me your Super Bowl prediction at the end here. Mahomes Brady going to be a great game, but I did want to ask you to. You did the Nickelodeon playoff broadcast a couple uh, weeks ago, which I thought was pretty yeah. phenomenal. What was that experience like? And do you have desires to? I don't know, get out of the studio and get into the booth one day too. It was fun, man. You know, we're the same age range. So um, it was unique preparing for this game. You know, usually I'm hardcore X's and O's and I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to do my Tony Romo. All right, Jim, look right here. You got the two players over, you know, Tony. Like I, I was, I was, I was ready. I was in my mode to do the whole Nate Stradamus predicting plays. But then I started thinking to myself, there's going to be kids and their parents watching this game. The demographic's different. I want to be able to talk to the five-year-old and the 50-year-old. So preparing for it, I literally was in my room, my hotel room in New Orleans, watching old reruns of like <laughs> Double Dare and, and all that, the original and Keenan and Kale and everything up until like recent Nickelodeon shows. And that was my preparation. It, I got seen enough football at this point. I can talk about the game with my eyes closed, but I was just sitting there laughing to myself like, this double dare line about the flags is going to kill him. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this line about the homework. Oh, this is great. Oh, and this line about Mitchell Trubisky being benched compared to being grounded. Oh, they're going to love it. I loved so, it. I loved it. <laughs> I appreciate that. So for me, um, it was it was a great game to uh, prepare for. And I do feel like Nickelodeon, the NFL, maybe NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, the Olympics, I think they're all going to get involved with that type of broadcast because it was so interactive. Um, and it just spoke to so many different generations of uh, people. Um, as far as the game, the big game before the season, I said it was Chiefs Buccaneers and it was going to be Chiefs victory. Patrick Mahomes snatching the torch away from Tom Brady, you know, and, and I feel like it's going to be a tough one. I feel like it's going to be a tough one and Patrick Mahomes will be the MVP. And I think in a high scoring affair, you know, 42, 35, somewhere around there. So I picked the Chiefs and I'm steadfast on that. But like the more I'm listening to Tom Brady, I spoke with him yesterday during Super Bowl opening night, and he has this calm about him. It's almost like calm. It's almost like Tom Brady. If Sunday was a movie, it's almost like Tom Brady has seen the movie and he knows the ending. You know what I'm saying? Like you ever meet that friend that couldn't hold water and he just could he couldn't wait to tell you? He's like, no, Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. You're like, bro, I haven't even seen it yet. Like I feel like Tom Brady is just sitting back like. I won. I, I, I know what happens on Sunday. Patrick Mahomes, he has a great game. I get it with two minutes left. I take my team down the field. We kick a field goal. I'm the go. And it's, I just, I can't help but to think that this is going to be the most Super Bowl fairy tale ending in Tom Brady's career. Um, so yeah, I, I picked the Chiefs, but I'm waffling. I'm waffling, bro. 
We'll leave it there. Brady's the greatest winner in, in football. Mahomes, maybe a chance to catch him. And Nate, one of the best interviews ever. On behalf of Crown Royal, I'm Dave Burkett, Nate Burleson, Freak.com. I appreciate you, Dave, man. Give my best to the family.